Well, cool. I get to give uh, further proof <clears throat> to the fact that it's impossible to follow Jack Schmidt. But uh, what I'd like to do is give you a quick update on uh, what we're doing in the Solar System Trex project. Uh, Solar System Trex is a project, part of SERVI. It's visualization and analysis tools for planetary data, online browser-based tools, and uh, we've been expanding. Uh, this grew out of the old LMMP, Lunar Mapping and Modeling Program. Our new Moon Trek portal has replaced LMMP. LMMP is gone. Uh, the Moon Trek portal provides basic GIS capabilities and more. So, like a GIS, you can, of course, measure diameters of features very easily, generate elevation profiles, export that data for CSVs to spreadsheets for later analysis. Uh, real neat feature, draw a bounding box around any surface feature you want, and you can create STL or OBJ files that you can send to your 3D printer. Make great gifts for the family members. Uh, also, a uh, suite of uh, more advanced tools includes lighting analysis. Uh, that also provides uh, watts per square meter mapping. Uh, slope analyses, customizable. Uh, computer learning based crater and rock detection and distribution. Uh, the real heart of the portal is based on the, in the case of the moon, roughly 1,000 different data layers that are geo-referenced and co-registered. So here, taking a look at the lunar north pole from a NAC-based imagery with the deep shadows, piercing the shadows with uh, laser altimetry, taking a look at average temperature from diviner, maximum temperatures from diviner, uh, slope maps, adding in the permanently shadowed regions, Hydrogen abundance. Uh, another example, taking a look at the Marius Hills. Fairly unspectacular in WAC imagery. Much better in laser altimetry. Add in a gravity map. But the ability to stack and then blend data products means that you are able to actually get to data that is not available in any single data product. And then this is very easily shareable by means of just generating a URL. Since it's all web-based, once you've produced your visualization, copy the URL, put it in an email, anyone can load it in their browser and bring up the exact visualization that you've created. New uh, data products include polar mineralogy maps uh, from Miriam Lemelin and her team includes plagioclase, clinopyroxene, orthopyroxene, olivine, uh, iron oxide abundances. Uh, also, we have the global mineralogy maps. So these are all good new additions. Uh, also, we have the polar ice stability at depth maps. And we've been taking advantage of a new geospatial data pipeline. We've de developed uh, access to the planetary data system. And we're using this to actually go back after the uh, constellation regions of interest in great detail, as well as the potential landing sites identified in last January's meeting here at Ames. And so we're looking at landing sites such as, as David pointed out, the uh, Schrodinger Impact Basin there. And uh, this is something that we've been working with David's team and his students as well as James Carpenter at ESA, uh, new maps, and the ability to produce new DEMs. Uh, so the visualizations can be very impressive. I'll just point out that last week alone, David's summer students generated 85 gigs of uh, data. Uh, they are our beta testers for new tools, and they're beta testing the hell out of us. Thank you, David. You're welcome. Uh, a new capability that uh, many of you probably haven't seen yet is the VR capability. So you can draw a path anywhere across the surface. And once you've done that, 
It will generate a QR code that you can just read into your smartphone using your smartphone's camera. You then take your smartphone and put it in a cheap $5 pair of Google Cardboard glasses and you can fly whatever path you have just drawn in virtual reality. That's great for mission planning, but it is really great for public outreach. Uh, well, here you see it being demonstrated at a baseball game. We had kids lining up to look at virtual reality flights while we were showing Moon Trek on the Jumbotron. I like the Jumbotron, I want one. <laughs> Thanks to Noah for uh, helping get this whole impetus for getting the moon into baseball games. It works really well. Uh, also, working with Bill Farrell, uh, we we're beta testing surface potential analysis, and uh, actually people are already starting to use it, but uh, we've got a lot of work still going on, but this will be extensible beyond the moon to other airless bodies. Very excited about this. Uh, working with our Italian partners on lunar uh, laser retroreflector tool testing, that's working out very well. Mars Trek. We're focusing largely on the human exploration zones. Uh, supposedly there's an upcoming meeting this coming spring to further refine those. With Mars Trek, you're able to zoom in on those, see the 100 kilometer radius uh, exploration zones as well as regions of interest within them. Uh, visualize topography, mineralogy, and uh, we're taking use of the same geospatial pipeline to be able to generate things like very detailed views of glaciers, uh, mid-latitude glaciers on Mars that are uh, considered prime candidates for human exploration zones. Uh, we've had Vesta Trek for some time now. Uh, the Dawn mission is uh, engaging us to create a new and improved version with new data that they are getting ready to provide us. We're excited about that. Uh, we are working on Phobos with our partners from JAXA and ISAS. So we are also involved in the in Puddle SWIG, one of my favorite ac acronyms, the Phobos Demos Landing Site Selection Group, as well as the new Phobos Mapping Working Group. So this is a very exciting area. Uh, it includes uh, New work in photoclinometry that's coming out of Ames here, and it's looking very promising, so we've been doing some testing on that. Uh, the Cassini mission has engaged us to do visualization and analytics of data that they are providing for Saturn's moons. So you will be seeing by the end of uh, this fiscal year a Titan trek, as well as the first release of Icy Moons trek, which this should be a movie, but uh, it's not showing up. There we go, thank you. So uh, first, uh, Icy Moons Trek will include a number of uh, moons. Uh, initial release will focus on Enceladus. Uh, also, Don uh, has asked us to produce a series trek. They're providing us with that data again. First release of this will be by the end of this fiscal year. So, additional projects being planned. Uh, we were advised by SMD this year that we should look next year to do a Mercury uh, portal. And so we started thinking about that. And then in our recent uh, trip to Japan, uh, we were approached by the uh, project scientist for Bepi Colombo and asked if uh, he could work with us on that so that this could be used as a mission planning tool for Bepi Colombo. Uh, also, uh, we were approached by NASA's chief scientist as well as the ISS director general to do work on planetary data visualization and analytics for Hayabusa 2 and its data returned from Ryugu. So I'm going to be lurking around here. If you have any questions, please do contact me. Uh, if you have any ideas, uh, we're having lots of fun and we're keeping really busy. Thank you very much. Let's see if you have any questions now. Does anyone have any questions for Brian right now? 
No, because you did such a good job of explaining it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Brian. We're going to move on then. Our next